You might be thinking about movies this weekend, as you always should be. And I know Jason Gorber says it's a must-do for everyone. The first Joker was really one of the most talked movies, I would say, of 2019. Today, the sequel hits theaters. Depending on how you look at it, Joker Folie Du could be a musical, a courtroom drama, maybe even a romance. But our film columnist Jason Gorber says there's one thing it's definitely not your run-of-the-mill action-adventure movie. Jason, good morning. Good morning to you. Second installment of the story. Maybe remind some people where we left off. Okay, so we got Todd Phillips who did the Hangover movies, and then he decided to do a Joker movie. And he did a movie which made well over a billion dollars that won the top prize at Venice, um, but caused a lot of consternation. It was either people completely responded to the character, not necessarily in a super positive way, thinking that it was sort of aggrandizing this character, or sort of uh, a lot of people uncritically were taking in the film. And I think uh, there there was... And then there was just people who were simply fans to see sort of a Batman character on screen. Here we have a film which literally litigates our response to the first film. It's a courtroom drama about Joker itself and asking questions about fandom. And so already a lot of the responses to the film has, have been super positive. And I don't even think it's a great film at all. But I think it's a really, really interesting film to have something on the scope of a blockbuster, but actually it's self-interrogating our response to our love of the anti-hero. Mm-hmm. And it's actually allowing the understanding that is there a difference between our fantasy of what the character should be versus what the character actually is and that dynamic at play. So there's a lot at work here within something that is structured much more as a courtroom drama, as, I, as we said, as a, a musical, as these different elements. What it is not is just a fun, frolicking action adventure. And I think people are going to be expecting that from a character like Joker. The first movie made me so uncomfortable. Mm. I'm not going to lie. I felt very uncomfortable and unease. Not because he was a bad guy, but just psychologically what he was going through. And, and again, I uh, respectfully love when movies can do that. That it's not, I, it's not that the film was advocating for the behavior of this character, making you question allegiances or understandings or different people's perspectives or where they're coming from. Some of the great films I've seen, um, I, I go back to a Peck and Pop film I saw called Straw Dogs. And the first time I saw it, for half an hour, I was just angry. I'm like, why? Why did the filmmaker do this? Why is everybody in this film terrible? And I realized, oh, the film wants me to feel this. Yes. You felt something. Yeah. And it's not usually what you feel from a big grand blockbuster is even if the feeling is discussed with the characters, that's a feeling rather than just being erased by a bunch of pixels fighting a bunch of other pixels. It may not be what you're looking for in going to a a film. That's a different conversation. But it at least was dealing with bigger questions at the Mm -hmm. best of times. This film is even more interesting because it's an anti-anti-hero movie. (laughs) And, And I generally think that people who are wanting it to be, you know, Fun and frolicking are definitely not going to get that. People who want it to be relatively straightforward are not going to get that. I think even those open to it sort of deeper conversations are going to be a bit frustrated. And yet I found myself drawn in into its telling. And as I said, I think superficially there's not a lot going on. But there's these tiny moments that I think generally are fascinating, particularly given today's fan culture. As I wrote about in my review, we live now in a world where fans are determining who these characters are. It was just announced yesterday that the studios are actually setting up um, systems whereby fan communities are going to work with the studios to determine where movies go. Mm. And this movie is basically saying, look, you are so close to this character, this Joker. Mm -hmm. You are so close to him that your very idea of Joker is trumping who the actual individual is, who Fleck actually is, who Joaquin Phoenix's character is. Could any other actor play that? That role. I mean, we've had dozens of actors no, play this role. The way that Joaquin Phoenix plays, he, this he role. is he. I think he is good in this. Lady Gaga is extraordinary, really, because 
because I think she has the most thankless task here. Um, she is playing this sort of, I mean, she's essentially Harley Quinn, <laughs> of course, which a lot of people will know from I mean, Margot Robbie. There's been all kinds of people that have played her in the past. But here she is dancing that dance. She is us as um, sort of general fandom. And her response and what she either gloms onto or rejects is essentially who we are as an audience. And she's doing so. She even dials back her singing. To be on sort possible? of to be on his level because wow. the two of them are duetting, so she can't be so dominant that it just becomes ridiculous. Um, I described it as sort of like karaoke level singing. I think his voice is okay, but it's Lady Gaga for uh, for a bloody sake. Um, the 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 fact of the matter is is that I think she actually is a very very strong actor. I think Joaquin is strong. I think visually it's pretty straightforward film, but as I said, I think people people will. Some people, some audiences will find something here. But I think if you're going in looking for another, frankly, a Batman movie. And speaking of Batman, Dark Knight, the Christopher Nolan film, I think did a better job of dealing with these incredibly deep psychological, sociological, sociopathic. Went farther into the darkness. But also gave us a sense of thrill. And Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's better or worse. I don't know if it's better for people just to think, oh, how cool is the Batmobile? Um, But but as it all plays out, I think this is a fascinating film in the history of this kind of comic book movie because it's very much a movie made by people saying, we shouldn't be doing this. And even though Lady Gaga is in it, it is not a musical. There's musical sequences. It absolutely (laughs) plays a musical. They watch classic musicals. They twist on musical. So sure, it's a musical, (laughs) but it's also so much more more and in yeah. some ways so much less it's all of these contradictions all rolled into one i i just ask people to go in with an open mind and be comfortable that they're going to be made uncomfortable i think that's the best thing to do with this kind of film it's good advice jason gorbin thank you all the best take care jason gorber is metro morning's film columnist and editor-in-chief of that shelf